everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you in five minutes how you can paint a palm tree with a fan brush. A real simple lesson. You're going to get it right away. I am sure you will understand what we're talking about. I'm taking a number four round and I am mixing black and brown paint together. I'm going to do a downward stroke on the left hand side with a curve to the left. Light pressure at the top, heavier pressure as I bring the stroke down to thicken it. I'm going to make a sister stroke on the right hand side, curving right. Again, lighter pressure at the top, pressing down as I continue through the stroke to thicken the trunk. When you're having trouble getting the paint to flow off the brush, you might want to add a drop or two of water to improve flow, but not so much that it gets watery. I'm going to continue to stroke over this brown and black mix of these trunks just to create a smooth and nice enough application and feeling of trunk. We want to widen them at the bottom and have them taper at the top. They're joining together, kind of like you would see on a beach. Very expected. I'm going to make a mess, mess with my fan brush there. I'm going to continue to stroke up and refine the trunk. You just take it to where it makes you happy. Now I'm going to clean up that hog brush and come over and load green and brown. I like to start with a very dark color for the palm fronds. I'm using a hog fan. That's a hog bristle fan. I stipple out an arc and then I flick down the frond. This is kind of like an upside down grass stroke, right? I'm going to come around and make almost a star pattern around the tree. The trunk will get covered somewhat partially at some point, and that is what you want. Don't forget to do upward fronds and notice that my upward stroke is messy, but I'm not worried because fronds on a palm tree are messy. So it's okay to get messy, messy here. I'm going to continue to curve. Now, when I go straight, I'm more straight, but when I curve to the right, you're going to want to curve upwards. So remember to rotate those curves and strokes around your tree. I like to bring some downward fronds and just make it look like things are full and finished, which is why you see me adding more paint. I come over to the right tree, the taller tree, and I do a similar thing. There won't be the same exact pattern of fronds because each tree is unique, but it will be very similar in nature. They'll definitely be sister trees. You can see how I curve those top fronds where they face the opposite direction from each other. I'm going to continue to do that downward flick. It's pretty friendly. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice. Be really forgiving of yourself if this is the first time you've ever done this technique and be sure to watch the first video in the series that kind of explains a lot of this. I'm going to rinse out, dry that brush off. I'm going to get some brown, yellow, and a little bit of black and a titch of white. And I'm going to come in and on the left side of the palm where I'm sort of suggesting light is coming in from, I'm going to stipple and pull a stroke across the trunk. This is to start to round it or shape it. We've got a deep value. Now we're adding a middle value. I'm going to continue to add white and black. This is a slightly lighter color, but it's grayed. It's weathered. Um, this is another level of highlight, and that really rounds the trunk. It also tells us that, that this object is by the beach. It's in the sun. It's in the salt, and therefore desaturates and gets a little gray. It's a very nice look, a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to come and add a little messy, messy bit of ground, right? Because the trees need to come out of something. I add a little green to it and I do a flickward grass stroke upwards. Real messy, real free because this is the beach. These are hardy grasses. I'm going to add a little yellow to my green brown mixture and add those first highlights to the front. Do not paint out all of the dark value that you first put in. You worked hard for that and that's what's going to give your tree form and feeling. So be sure to leave some of that there. I am going to highlight all of my fronds on this particular set of trees. That's not always what you would do, but for this one, this is what we want to do. I'm going to continue this highlighting through both trees. You can see that I'm distinctly finishing these fronds, giving them more form, but I'm leaving a lot of the green there. So, you know, feel confident. I went and grabbed a little white there, just a little bit tricky bit of white. And you can do that too, a little tricky bit of white. So I'm rinsing out, I'm drying off, I'm going to get some brown, and I'm going to get some yellow. And I'll get a smidge of green into it. But really, this is like, this is like that dry yellow green that happens when stuff is really weathered, add white to it. And this is sort of a, this gives the effect, that last highlight on the fronds that really helps them pop and feel like these are arid plants. They exist in harsh conditions, and they're happy, and they're green. But, you know, they have to conserve some energy there. I also add that flick to the bottom because you want to have unification all the way through. 
I can't wait to show you what we're going to paint tomorrow. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And we'll see you in a measle really soon. Bye-bye.